Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, getting through the logjam of game engine releases from this past weekend. We had UPPGE, the Blender game engine, got an update. We had Bevy, the uh, Rust-based game engine, getting an update. And today we've got Flax getting an update as well. Flax 1.6 was just released. And this is what you see in front of you. This is Flax. And I'm just, I'm a fan of this one. It's kind of like the, the scrappy little underdog that could. And it's amazing what this engine is capable of because basically this is like a lightweight Unity. Uh, and it's kind of not even really exactly exaggerating. The features and functionality in here are quite impressive, and there was quite a bit added in uh, Flax 1.6, as we will see when we get into the release notes details in a bit. But this basically a full editing environment. You use C++ or C Sharp as your programming language. There's also a visual language built in. Uh, you have almost all of the tools you would expect from a game engine like this. You can see here the, the things that exist in the world, your simple primitives, variety of different lights, visual effects, skyboxes, camera effects, particle effects, and so on. Full physics system, as you can see over here. They did just upgrade the physics version in this particular release, and we have cloth and destruction physics coming soon. We have a full UI system in here as well, and then a number of other things such as CSG or constructive solid geometry uh, for white boxing your level designs. We've got animation controllers in here. We have 3D audio built in, which also got some new features and functionality in this release. There is a lot to like in Flax. In fact, there's some things that you won't find in, say, Godot. Uh, for example, there is a full-blown terrain editing system available in here. There is a visual scripting language. There is 64-bit uh, precision coordinates in here, etc. So it's kind of got, uh, again, a lightweight Unity vibe to it. It's just, it's an interesting engine. It's one that I have uh, kind of long loved since it was first released, and if you've never checked it out before, I pretty much recommend to do so. Let's go do a quick overview of Flax itself, and then we'll get into the 1.6 details. So if you want to learn more about Flax, it is available at FlaxEngine.com. You're not really going to find all that much on the homepage, obviously. It's the brag stuff about, you know, the engine itself, where you probably find it more interesting, is ultimately in the features category. Here we go. These are the features of Flax. So you see the highlight things here is you get seamless C Sharp and C++ scripting. Uh, you get automatic draw call batching and instancing, which should speed up rendering performances. Uh, every asset is using async content streaming by default, supports a variety of different platforms, including now iOS, which is quite cool. Uh, Real-time global illumination via DDGI with uh, reflections with custom software ray tracing, uh, GPU light map baking, visual scripting, visual effects tools, nested prefab support, large world slash 64-bit precision for world coordinate support. You get localization tools. You get online services integrated. You get networking for multiplayer games. You have animation tools in there. You have hot world tools such as hot, sorry, open world tools. I don't know where hot, oh, I mixed the next line down. So open world tools such as terrain foliage, fog, and level streaming in there, hot reloading of C Sharp and C++ in the editor, uh, gameplay globals for technical artists, full source code is available. We'll get to the cost in just a second here. Uh, direct communications and help from the engine devs. There is an active Discord server if you do want to go ahead and check it out. And it is very lightweight. So the source code is available a lot like Unreal Engine. You're going to find a lot of things are like Unreal Engine where the way things are structured. Uh, so you can clone it and then compile it in less than three minutes, which is pretty impressive. So if you're interested, uh, it is free. Uh, you only pay 4% when you release above the first $250,000 made per quarter. I do believe that is all USD. Uh, so Flax Engine, all tools, all supported platforms, all source code, all the samples, everything else can be used for free. Uh, so basically, unless you make more than a quarter of a million dollars in the, in the quarter of your game or a million dollars in the year, well, in like, unless, you know, basically $250,000 per quarter anyways, uh, it is completely free to use. So let's go check out the 1.6 release details. Uh, so there's a lot to love in this particular release. Uh, starting off, it does have .NET 7 support, uh, which is, again, another thing that it's kind of got Godot beat on. Uh, so we've got uh, better performance as a result with the new garbage collector, new just-in-time compiler, uh, optimized standard lib, latest C-sharp support. You can mix uh, native and manage debugging in Visual Studio 2022. Hot Reload is now using the .NET way of system instead of their custom solution, which should be more stable. Uh, and then .NET 9 and so on going down the future should be easier to integrate, and you should get a smaller build size due to the new standard lib stripping. Uh, so .NET 7 is now one of the major features of the 1.6 release, which is quite cool. As I mentioned earlier on, PhysX got a bump. It was using 4.1. It is now using 5.1. Uh, so you're getting better stability performance as a result, as well as new GPU simulations. Uh, they were going to be adding cloth and destruction for the engine in the coming months um, as, in, as an inbuilt feature to use in Flax games. As I mentioned earlier on, there is now iOS support. This is actually quite nice. It implemented iOS via uh, Vulkan using Molten VK. 
uh, which is a pretty common way of doing things. Basically, Molten VK maps Vulkan back to Metal, which is uh, Apple's proprietary rendering graphics library. Uh, they also updated all of their samples to have um, touch and that they run smoothly on the iPad or iPhone devices. So this opens up Flax games to there's a huge number of devices out there. I think this is a, a huge announcement to having iOS support there. And on top of that, we also have Mac OS support for ARM64 devices. That would be the M1 and M2 powered chips. Now I should point out that you basically either have to use their continuous uh, deployment versions from GitHub or build it yourself. And I'm also going to point out I actually couldn't get it to run. It threw an error the minute I tried it. So you might have some tentative issues with um, support on the M1 one or M2 chips, but it is there now. So you can actually run it uh, on those platforms, but you are going to have to build it uh, yourself from code, which is a bit unfortunate. I got some improvements on the animation tools, both on the tools as well as the animation retargeting. So animation retargeting enables you to basically play the same animation on multiple skeletons. So as you can see here, two mixable rigs here, same animation, two different models. And you can see a more extreme version of it with synchronized across uh, different skinned models, very different models exact same animation works fine that's pretty cool uh, and then we got controls so there is an animation graph here for doing uh, visual state machines for your animations uh, so they added an any state node uh, which can define transition states will always be checked during the state machine updates it can improve the workflow when creating more complex character animations for example death state can be triggered from all states so that is a cool improvement here also some updates to the audio side of things uh, audio system got multiple quality improvements for better spatial sound playback and a new HRTF audio so you can now control control pan Doppler factor and spatialization with audio, uh, which again is quite nice. And then on the networking side of things, uh, there is a network replicator already built in. There is now an optional network replication hierarchy that enables you to basically selectively tag things that would be replicated across. Um, so it's a simple replication hierarchy can be created that would control replication FPS for each object and skip unnecessary replications for clients that are too far away. Docs for learning more here. So if you want to uh, do some network code with this guy, it's got some improvements there as well. So that is the Flax 1.6 highlights. Quite a bit here, to be honest. Move to .NET 7 slash C Sharp 11. The update to the physics engine, the iOS platform support, the Mac OS as a development platform support. Uh, very cool in that regard. If you want to go ahead and check it out, it is available uh, for Linux as a downloadable here uh, and Mac and this one here you've got to build it from github it's going to be coming in the future and I will point out once again it actually didn't work for me uh, at the same time you could also build it from source so this is not an open source project because you know it does have that proprietary price tag attached to it just like you would see with again Unreal Engine but the entirety of the source code is available here it is very actively developed uh, I've said that it's mostly one guy and it is it's mostly this guy right here but you see here there are 46 other contributors to this project uh, so well, that is quite nice to see. The, the source code itself is a combination of C++ and C Sharp. You want to go ahead and check it out. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Flax Engine with the just released Flax Engine, uh, sorry, Flash Engine, Flax Engine 1.6 release. Let me know what you think of Flax Engine in general, the 1.6 release specifically. I think, again, this is like the little engine that could. I've actually always been a big fan of this guy because you just use it. Check it out. You will be amazed at just how capable this engine is. Um, it, it's probably above a couple of other ones with larger teams like it's succeeded more than say stride which is quite impressive because that was like a commercial engine that got open sourced out and just seeing what flax is capable of when you check it out yourself you'll be pretty surprised i think so flax 1.6 released quite a few nice new features in there let me know what you think comments down below and i will talk to you all later goodbye